Yes, Inspector. Well, Doc, here's something off the beaten track. A murder and nothing left but the bone. But how are we going to determine how long it's been here? I don't know. There don't seem to be any clues. Maybe the medical examiner has some idea about it. My guess is this man was murdered over a year ago. It looks as though he'd been there for years and years. I don't think so. He was killed with a blunt instrument. Fact you discovered in three places. Hey, well, what's going on here? You live around here? I'm from the police department. Uh, yes, I uh, I own this property. Yeah, well, somebody's been using your back alley as a cemetery. Cemetery? Yes. Uh, do you recall anyone digging or excavating here within the past year or so, Mr. Uh, uh, Beck? Uh, my name is uh, Beck. Beck. Yes, I, yes, I, I remember. My grandson complained some time ago about the gas being cut off. They, they were digging out here then. When was that? I, I, I just can't remember. Well, where's your grandson now? I want to talk to him. Oh, no. No, you can't talk to him. He's... <laughs> what was that? Well, uh, you can't disturb him. He doesn't want to be disturbed. Is that so? Well, we've got to get some action. Come on, let's go. Paul, why aren't you more careful? More oh, careful. Now, that's right in my face, in my hair. Oh, everything's going wrong. Hey, just a minute. That stuff went all over me. Paul, it's your own fault. My fault? I told you not to use so much acid. You told me. Why don't you do it yourself? Always blaming me. Now, Paul, don't excite yourself, dear. It's all right. Anything wrong, Paul? No. That fool sister of mine, always making mistakes. What do they want? Well, uh, these gentlemen want to talk to you, Paul, from the police department. Police? Please, please don't disturb him now. I'm very sorry, miss. Paul, but... just turn that off. You see, my grandson is trying to finish a very important experiment. I see you are studying biological uh, chemistry. Studying? My oh. brother has advanced far beyond any of the authorities. Now, mm -hmm. Amy, Amy, come, come. Now, Paul, can't you talk to these gentlemen just a moment? Just a moment. Your grandfather tells us that some time ago your gas was turned off while the main was being repaired. You remember that? Do I remember it? I'll never forget it. I'd be lost a whole week's work on account of it. Had to do everything all over again. They gave us absolutely no notice. That was too bad. Uh, do you recall when that happened? I can tell you the very day. The very hour it happened. That was experiment K11. 
K11. Everything ruined. Gas off, 10.45 a.m. That was April 14th, 1930. Well, were the workmen of the gas company digging in the alley that day? Yes. But why don't you go to the gas company for your information instead of bothering us? Oh, now get this. The remains of a man's body were found in the alley back of your house. We're investigating it. And we expect the cooperation of every one of you. We don't bother anybody. We wouldn't know about such things. Inspector, couldn't we talk to these people later on, if it's necessary? All right. That's all for now. Come on, let's go. Uh, you see, my grandson is nervous. <laughs> Very nervous. Ah, but you'll hear great things about that boy. Someday his name will be famous in the world of science. Well, quite a collection of Chinese antiques you have oh, here. Yes, I might almost call myself an authority on Oriental art. And some of these things are very rare. Indeed. Here's a cute little toy, Doc. <laughs> yes, just one tap, and that would be the finish. <laughs> yeah, you're right, Jeff. Oh, I'm very proud of those. I got them from a friend a few months ago. You see, centuries ago, among the ancient Manchus... Let's skip that part. Who did you get them from? I was just coming to that. Uh, my friend downstairs is the Honorable Wang Yong, a Chinese gentleman who imports antiques for American collectors. And these things are all gifts from him. Downstairs, eh? Yes. Thanks. We may see you again. Soon. I can see Mr. Wang Young. Oh, oh just a moment. Uh, just a moment. The police? The police? All right, Kong. I'll see them. Come in, please. Good evening, gentlemen. What can I do for you? Well, I don't know yet. We've just come from your friends upstairs. Oh, yes, the Banks. Remarkable people. Oh, they own Mr. Bank. Fine Oriental scholar. Young people, very nervous. Will the gentleman be seated? No, thank you, not now. Here's another cute little toy. Uh, Mr. Wang, where were you during the month of April, 1930? Do you remember? Chinese have good memories. I left here for San Francisco on the 10th of April. How long were you there? I'll return on the 15th of May. Were you in San Francisco on business? Yes, I have a warehouse there. Well, uh, then of course you'd know nothing about the bones of a man found buried in a trunk in your alley here. Too bad. Sorry, I can't be of it and the assistant to police. Well, perhaps we'll be back. Soon, I hope. Perhaps sooner than that. Good day. I'll tell you, Inspector, we simply can't identify the remains of that man. We don't know what he looked like. We don't know who he was. You see, Doc, they've searched every missing person's file in the country for a man with a skull that size and age. Might as well try identifying the bones of a prehistoric animal. Inspector, I'm going to ask you a most unusual favor. I want you to make me the custodian of that skull. What do you think, Lieutenant? Well, since you're asking me, Chief, I'd say the case is washed up. You haven't got the body, you've got no suspects. You forget the occupants of that house. <laughs> a Chinaman. And three intellectual nuts. Now, you found out that the Bex told the truth about the gas company digging in the alley. You might just as well say that some of the workmen did the, uh, bury the trunk. Someone might have buried it shortly after the workmen got through. The earth was easy to dig into, and the loose soil wouldn't have aroused any suspicion. You're wasting your time, Doc. Mm. Well, all right, Doc. We'll let you have your way. But remember, 
Dead men's bones tell no oh, tales. Oh, thank you, Inspector. Thank you. Phallic index, 75. 75, yes. Uh, have you got them all, Dr. Pratt? I think so. Uh, let me see. Nose, leptophene with an index of 48. Facial index, 85 degrees. Intrapupillary width, 67. Mm-hmm. Oh, just a minute, Dr. Crabtree. This man was not white. You knew that, of course. I know, I did not. This is the head of an Oriental. Not a Chinese. It's Mongolian, at least Asiatic. <clears throat> Professor, you say there are no two skulls exactly alike? Just as with fingerprints, no two alike. Why can't you apply the anthropologist's method to this case? You reconstruct the bodies of prehistoric animals from skeletons, as for instance. Now, why can't you recreate this skull into something resembling its former likeness? Hmm? I think we can. Death robs man of the flesh, but bones remain to guide us. You <laughs> see, Dr. Asia? Uh, well, I must be going. Come back in a day or so, Doctor, and I'll show you an Oriental that will amaze you. And I'm going to show Inspector Carr an Oriental that will amaze him. <laughs> Good day. <laughs> Good day, Dr. Francis. Another trip to San Francisco, Mr. Wang? No, sir. China, on business. Yeah. Well, there's more important business going to detain you here, get me? Now, we've just learned that you arrived in San Francisco on the 28th of April. You told us you left here on the 10th of April. Where were you between those dates, Mr. Wang? Visiting my branch stores. Inspector, it seems rather strange to me that Mr. Wang, with such an extensive business, would go away and leave this place unattended. I have a young friend, Charlie Lee, who stayed here most of the time. Well, where is he now, this Lee? Back in Cambridge, finishing college. Anyone around here know him? Oh, yes. He was quite friendly of the family upstairs, the bank. Well, uh, was that about the time of the murder? I have already told you. At the time of the murder, I was in San Francisco, on business. Well, better postpone that trip to China. Get me, Mr. Wang? And I don't mind telling you I'm having this place watched. Come along, Doc. Uh, how do you do? How do you do? Uh, can I do something for you? I think you can. At least, I hope so. Look at this. Mm. An unusually fine piece of work. And I shall expect as good from you, but... It calls for the utmost secrecy. Uh -huh. For you, Lieutenant. Mm, here's our answer from Cambridge. The university says, Charlie Lee didn't come back to finish his term last year. Present whereabouts unknown. Well, it's a Chinese puzzle, all right. But we've got to solve it. Come on, let's go. Paul will be here in a minute. Mr. Wang here claims that when he went to San Francisco, he left things in charge of Charlie Lee, a young Chinese student who is now in Cambridge. Do you know this Charlie Lee? Oh, oh yes, I know him. He used to visit Mr. Wang. I, I used to see him quite often. He is quite interested in our work. Who's that up there? When did you last see Charlie Lee? I don't know. I think he left here 
Just before Mr. Wang went to San Francisco. No, 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 Mr. Paul. No, that is wrong. Uh, I, I can't remember exactly. Oh, but Mr. Paul. I think Mr. Lee was here after Mr. Wang left. Yes, I think it was shortly after. I, uh, but I don't just remember. I left a long time before Charlie Lee. Did you? Well, uh, maybe you're right. It was such a long time ago. Well, then, I have nothing else to say. Now listen, you're lying to me, every one of you. And I want the truth or... Oh, that's Congo. He got loose. Here, it, Congo. As you see, it's one of our pets. Uh, my grandson is greatly interested in zoology. Okay, Inspector. Dr. Crabtree is ready for you downstairs. All right. Come on, Mr. Wang, you come with me. Come in, Mr. Wang. There's someone here to see you. Oh, hello, Charlie. I got your letter a few days ago. Where is that letter? It's over there. Let's see it. Come on, show it to me. Well, show it to me. I just got this letter a few days ago. Yeah? Sure, I did. Let's see the envelope. Mm. Mail from Cambridge, all right. The address was removed with ink eradicator. No. Ink eradicator. Holy mackerel, the Becks. Uh. What's the matter with him tonight? Uh. Better give him something to keep him quiet. Charlie Lee did not give his life for science. They took it. Grandpa, where's Paul? He's got to do something quick. The police know. Trying to throw that out of the broken window. Oh, shut up. Police, oh, just a few more days and we could finish everything. Can't we get away? No, it wouldn't be easy. The police are guarding both the front and the back of the house. Oh, just a few more days. Just a few more days and they'd know we have the right to kill him. Oh, no, we couldn't get away. It's impossible. Well, then... We'd all be better off to be dead than to stop now. We can get out the back way. about this. They must have another man upstairs. Doc, you go up the front way of the lieutenant. Ready, come with me. Come on, Come on. Come on. up here. Uh, 
into here, you'll all be blown to pieces. Now, drop those guns, and I'll tell you something about my experiments. Come on, drop them. I'll give you three counts to do it. One, two, yeah. Now, we'll all die, just like Charlie Lee did. Yes, I killed him, but you The Skull Mystery. That'll make a great headline. Say, what are they going to do with the Beck family? Send them to the chair? No, they'll send them to the asylum. Yeah, another case like this, and we'll all go to the asylum. Hey, Inspector! I just got word from headquarters. They found a skull in a suitcase over on Central Avenue. Another one.